Hey guys, this is Joe from Excel by Joe. In this video, I'm going to show you how to run player simulations in Excel uh, for NBA. What we're going to do is run uh, a whole bunch of simulations for uh, NBA players for a slate and then check how they do uh, as far as like with their highs, their lows, uh, how, how often they make value, if they make six or seven times their value, and so on. Um, we're going to go through all of that, how to set it up, and everything. So uh, stick around, we'll get to that in one second. Uh, just before we do, I just want to mention, again, if you want to check out my video course, uh, we've got about 8 to 10 hours of videos on using spreadsheets to uh, help your daily fantasy game. Check that out at SpreadsheetSchoolDFS.com or my uh, pre-made uh, lineup optimizers spreadsheets. Uh, you can get those at OptimizeLineups.com. Both the links are below, and um, that's it. Let's get right into the video. See you there. Thanks. So we can use Excel to simulate the fantasy scores for uh, NBA players, but we need to know a few things. We need to know, uh, we have to have a base, which is either their uh, average points, or what's even better is like a projected points, which you can get from uh, many different sources. And more than just that, you need their standard deviation. So standard deviation, if you can see here, is kind of their range of averages that a player can score. So... A player may say a player scores 20 points in five straight games. In each game, so their average is 20 points, but there's really no deviation from their average. They're all going to fall right here into this mean, or like really close, or what if they got, say, 21 and 19 in one game. They're going to fall real close to here, which is kind of this like weird uh, mountain-shaped curve here. But what if someone got this? They scored 5 one game, um, 10 the next game, 60 another game, um, say 20 the third game, and just say 16 one other game. So if we average these out, if I look, the average is 22, so it's pretty close to 20. But their scores are all over the place. I mean, they got a 60, which is way out here. They got a 5. They got a 10, which is really low. Standard deviation will tell us, will kind of tell us this range. Um, like the higher the number for the standard deviation, the um, higher the range of outcomes. And the lower the standard deviation, the lower the range of outcomes. Like if you're playing a cash game, you want someone with a low standard deviation because you want them always to score around 20 points. You want to know they're going to get 20 points. But if you're playing a tournament, you want that possibility to get 60. That's how you're going to win the big tournament. But they also could score five, but that's why you want these guys with a high standard deviation. In order to simulate games, we, we need to first come up with the standard deviation, and then we can start simulating the game. So first, let's get into that. So I've got a chart here. I've already done this, and I'll show this to you in a, in a little bit. First, let's go to, I've got game logs here. Here's the NBA game logs. Um, I got this from BigBallData.com. I'll put the link below. They um, they got some really affordable um, game logs, and they got some great stats. I mean, you can get they got all the fantasy outputs, like salaries and points and so on. So it's uh, worth checking out. But so what we need to do is to calculate a standard deviation first off. So I already took. I'm just gonna first start this off with just one player. I'm just with Luka Don Doncic. So I filtered out his all his game logs, and I put it over here. So see, I've got all his games. This is just the 2019. And then see, here's all his points. If I highlight over it, cut, hover over it, it says an average of 57. So was that he averaged a score about 57. But what's his standard deviation? If he, all the scores are on 57, his standard deviation would be zero, but obviously it's not. So to do that, we are going to insert a formula. So I'm going to start typing it in. And there's a couple of different ones here. The stdev, dot p, and dot s. I'm going to use the dot p. Uh, dot s is when you only have a sample of data. And dot p, I forget what it's, it's called, but I think it's for if you have a full population of data, which we have a full year, so I'm going to use that. The, just the regular dev, I believe that was, was an older version of standard deviation, so... I use the dot P one and I click OK. And all we need to do is put in the range of numbers or the actual numbers. So all I'm going to do is just 
highlight column K and click OK. And here we go. So his standard deviation came out to 16.16. So we're going to use this when we calculate, when we, we do our projections, our, our simulations. So what we can do here, we can kind of figure this out. So if we get the standard deviation, this, here's the average. I'm just going to do a quick average. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a quick little pivot table here to uh, show you. I'm going to do insert pivot table. I want to just do it on this existing worksheet. And all I want to do is just the DraftKings points. I want to put over to rows and I want to put over to values. So over here in values now, I'm going to right click and just I want to group these. And it's starting at 0, ending at 100, group by 10. And I'm just going to do a count. So this is how many times the player that Doncic scores, see he averages 57. So actually his most were slightly over that. And this is his range of outcomes. And here's the point. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you how to simulate a score. Here's where we're going to start our simulation. We're going to start typing in this function called norm INV. What that's going to do, you have to first put a probability. It's, there's three different items. What's the probability? Since we're doing just a rank, we want a random range, so we're going to put R-A-N-D with the parentheses. That's just going to give you a random number between 0 and 1. That's going to be used to pick, uh, pick the sample or the simulated score. What's the mean, which is the average here? And what's the standard deviation? This. So we close the parentheses. There. So we just ran... We just simulated a score right there, 69.47 as as a score. Now if I press delete again, oh, we scored 40 points in that game. So let's copy this down maybe 100, 150 times. But we want to make sure, let's just anchor this range, these cells first. So it's always looking at this uh, standard deviation and average. So now if I copy this down, there I copied it down about a hundred times. Let me format it with a comma. So now the count 106 uh, simulations. And let's kind of do the same formulas here. So stdev.p, what's the standard deviation? What's the range? These numbers here. You came out with a standard deviation of 15, which is pretty close to what we had. And what's the average? And there's the average of 58. So now what we can also do is insert a pivot table and just kind of see the range of outcomes. And we want to put scores over the values, scores over the rows. We want to change this to count. So value field settings, we want count. So it's going to be the same as the other one. And let's uh, group this like we did the first time. So we're going to group it starting at 0, ending at 100, count by 10. And there we go. So we get a relatively similar um, distribution of scores here. There's four scores that were 30 or less. In an actual, there was three. But, I mean, there are 106 games compared to 67. So that would kind of make sense. The highest range is from 50 to 60 here. Here it's from 60 to 70. But So it's pretty close. And actually, if I press delete, everything is going to recalculate. And you get all new numbers. And now I've just got to refresh this. And now we get different 
Uh, so we had different average and different standard deviation. So we just, if you were following along, you just simulated uh, fantasy scores for 100 games. You don't have to stop at 100. Just drag it down 1,000 times. You simulate it for 1,000, 5,000, whatever you want. But I mean, just so you know, if you, if you once you start getting the hundreds of thousands of random, this function with the random in there, it's going to slow down the computer a little bit. But so that is how we do uh, do this simulation for one player. But that's just one player. If you are playing, obviously you're playing DraftKings, FanDuel, or whatever, you want simulations for a lot of players. Now let's get into seeing how you can get this simulation for for a whole multitude of, uh, of players that are playing today. Okay, so now that we know how to do a, project, a simulation for one player, let me show you how to do it for a group of players. So it's great to have one player simulation, but we want to simulate the whole field, every player that's playing in, in today's games. So to do that, we need their player projection, which we can get that from a different website. I'll show you how to get where I get mine, but you can get it from wherever. Um, you can also use average too, but average isn't as accurate. And we need the standard deviation. So I showed you how to get standard deviation for one player, but let me show you how to get it for everyone. Because once you get the standard deviation, you don't have to keep doing this every day. Um, the standard deviation should carry forward. I mean, you maybe could update it every once in a while. And not, now I'm in um, looking at last year's um, game logs. So, I mean, once they play a certain number of games in, in this current year, I'll probably update this. But So, this is how we get the standard deviation. So, stdev.p. And I'm looking at DraftKings points. So there it is. 14.84 is the standard deviation for everyone. That helps us nothing. We need it by player. So if we look over here by player, all the players are here in column E. As you can see, what we want to do is make an if statement in here. So we're going to do if parentheses. Now we have to put the full range equals E2, comma. So what that's doing, it's saying it's looking at all this full range and everywhere it equals Vince Carter, it's going to go to column S and do the standard deviation of that column. So we have our, uh, we have to put one more parentheses because we have this to, end, to close off the standard deviation formula. So now here's our if statement in here, but since this is an array, we can't just press enter because it's not going to work. We need to do control shift and enter. There. Now, if you go over to it, see it's 7.33. Look at the little brackets around that. That just means it's an array. So you need to do this in order to pretty much get, get the array for everyone. Um, see if I copy this down. Now, and let's say, let's go down to Tyson Chandler, and I paste it in here. There, hit, see his standard deviation is 5.7, and Vince Carter's is 7.3. And what we need to do, because there's hundreds of players in here, we would need to copy this all the way down. And see if you notice, these are all 7.3 because they're all Vince Carter. So in order to get this from everyone, we copy this all the way down. I'm not going to do this now because I did this before, and it it's going to probably tie up your computer for a good 10, 15 minutes because it's calculating a 1,000 formulas in a, on an array, so it's going to be really slow. So what I would do, I just let it run, walk away, and come back in a little while. But what you would do then, once you get all of these in there, we're going to go to our... Here's where I already got the list of standard deviations for all the players. And if you see the formula, all I did was a VLOOKUP. I did VLOOKUP, Trey Young, and I'm looking in this game logs from column E. So here's the game logs. It's looking at column E, which is the player name. It finds it, and then you're counting over the number of columns you want until you come up to this column, which is the standard deviation. So, and it pulls them, pulls it all in, and this is this would be how you would get all your standard deviations. Okay, so now we've got that. 
Our next step is to go to a new tab and we're gonna need to copy in our projections. So I get the projections from Daily Fantasy Fuel. You can get them from wherever you want. So I'm gonna download them as a CSV file. And this is just for today's games. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy this over. Control C, Control V. So I'm, I copy this, this over and here's our projections that we're gonna we're gonna be using. So using projections are better um, than average, obviously. And now what we want to do is first, just the tool that I the, the Daily Fantasy Fuel puts their names separate, first name and last name. So I want to combine them. So I'm gonna put name here. So I'm just doing. A2, then and, quote, space, quote, and B2. And all that's going to do is just combine them into one new name. So I'm going to copy copy that down. And then we want to copy over the standard deviation. So all I'm going to do is a VLOOKUP here. And I'm looking up this, the player's name over in our main file. Of standard deviations comma two comma false because we want the second column so now what we're gonna do is just copy that down so this standard deviation is 13.78 and see if we copy it down See, there's going to be a few players that you're going to have to fix the first time. And like here, LaMelo Ball, because he's a rookie. or So for all players that are either rookies or didn't play, what you're going to need to do is you're going to need to add them to, to your standard deviation file by maybe looking at 2020 players. And again, this is just like a, a first time you do you do this. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create an if error. So if error, so that means like if, if he's not in there, then I'm going to just do a formula of projections times 0.3. Because I did a little checking, and it, it seems roughly that standard deviation is roughly around 30%. So now, see now, uh, Lamelo Ball has a 12.39. Uh, standard deviation. So you would just do that through here, LeBron James coming up zero. I'm not really sure why. Maybe I didn't include him in the, uh, somehow I didn't have him in the standard deviation file. This is just the first time you use it. You're going to come up with these errors. Once you get it going, you can do this day after day, after day and you won't have these problems. So let's just move on though. We've got our standard deviation here. And now what we're going to do is create a simulator tab. This is where we're going to simulate all the players. So what we need to do first off is copy all the names. So I'm pressing Control C to copy it. And this can be done with a macro. So every day that you, every day when you want to do the new simulation, it'll do this all for you. So we're going to do paste special, values, and transpose. Transpose just means it copies the names across instead of up and down. Okay, so now we have all our players here, and this is where I'm going to start doing our formula, which we uh, went over before, and it's the norm inv uh, function, and it's rand is the first one, and now we have to figure out what's the mean. The mean is the average, so to get the average, we get the average on our other sheet, the projector sheet. So we're going to use the X lookup. That's similar to the V lookup, just works uh, from right to left. So the X lookup, what's our lookup value? We're looking up the player's name. And where? Where are we looking up this player's name? We're looking it up here in column T. And then what do we want to pull? Since we want the 
the mean, which is the average, or if in this case the projection, it's column R. Okay, so now we pulled our mean, now I press comma, and what's our standard deviation? We're going to do that the same way. We go back to here and we do a VLOOKUP. Since we're going from left to right, XLOOKUP would work fine too though. And what's our lookup value? Again, it's the player name, comma, back to here, it's these two columns, comma, two, comma, false. So we'll pull the standard deviation. Now the parentheses to end the, the norm INV formula, press enter, and there we go. We just did a, ran a simulation, and if I press delete, it's going to recalculate it. Now, before we can copy all this over, we need to put a few dollar signs in here to anchor some of this stuff. So if I'm copying this over, I always, in our lookup, I always want to be looking in column in row one, so I need to put a dollar sign there. We're always looking in column T, always looking in column R, so that means dollar signs. Here again, anchor row one. We're going to anchor this column T, and it should be everything. Now we press enter. Now if I copy this across, there we have, um, let's font format it so it looks a little better. Just do one decimal place. And there's an error for LeBron James because he doesn't, remember we show that it's a zero for standard deviation. So I'm just going to ignore that for now. I'll look. I'll look into the reason for that later. Uh, all we'd have to do is pretty much add a standard deviation in there, and then this should work out fine. Say if a standard deviation was just 12, I'll put that in there for now. And there we go. And now we've got a simulation for him. So what we're going to do is copy this across. However, this, we're going to run into a problem. Okay, well, first, it's a lot of columns over. We're also coming up with a lot of negatives because that could happen based on the simulation. So to get around that, what I'm going to do is do a formula called max around the end. So the max, you put all the ones, and it's with the higher number. So it's going to pick this number or zero. So it means it'll never be less than zero. So now I'm going to copy this all the way across. And see, we get some of these num errors just because there's there no there's no standard deviation for them. But they probably only average two points a game, so we don't even care about them anyway. So I'm going to run here. I just copied it down to row 228. So I ran about 220 simulations for every player. I mean, you want to do 1,000, you can. Um, but the more you do, just know it's going to slow your computer down. See, I pressed it in and how it took about a second to run. If you do 10,000 simulations, it's going to slow your computer down for sure. So now we have all our simulations. And this is where we want to start figuring out the um, different rows, like high, the low, and let's see, 4x, do they make their four times salary, 5x, 6x, and 7x. And um, I guess we could put copy their salary over. Actually, we don't even need, need to put their salary in there. And if there's any anything else that you wanted to look at, you can add that in, but this is just what I'm going to do. So, to get the high, it just equals max. And I copy this down, and I'm just going to manually type in 25,000. It's just going to look down 25,000 rows in case you add on more to the 200. It doesn't matter if you have put up to 250 or Look up to count to row 250 or 2500, 25,000. 
there's nothing in them, so it's still gonna, it's just gonna look for what numbers are there. So now what's the low? We're gonna do min. I'm gonna do the same thing. And see if we, we can copy this over. And there we go. We got their high and their low. And now let's see if they make uh, four times their their salary. So let's uh, to do that. Well, actually, I guess in order to do that, we do need salary. So to get the salary, we're going to do an X lookup, and we'll look up this name. Comma, go back over to projections over here. And what column do we want to pull? This column, the salary. So we just need to anchor this stuff before we copy it. This I know there's a lot of steps in this, getting it set up. But once you get it set up, I mean, there won't be too many steps that you have to do. You can even run macros to, to copy over the, the daily data. So there's a salary. So now let's do, let's just see. We're going to do a formula to figure out how many times salary they get. So salary divided by 1000 times 4 equals 44. So in order to get four times salary, Joe Kick would need 44 points. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a count if, and we're going to put the whole range in there. This range, remember I always put the 25,000. If this range, comma, and then what's the criteria? The criteria is greater than this. You have to put the and in this, so it's greater than 44. It's going to count how many times it's greater than 44. So it's 171 times, which is good, but we don't know how many times they actually um, did simulations. So I'm going to do divided by count A, which just counts non blank cells. So again, B10 to B25,000. There. So 80.84, let's do, put in as percentage, point, it's 84.5% of the time, he'll hit four times his salary. Now I'm going to copy this formula down in each one of he, these. And what we need to do is just change this from times 4, this one is to times 5. And then this one is to times 6. And this is to times 7. Format these as percentages. And then we can copy this over. And there we go. Now let's just copy this formula all the way across. And we have our simulator all set. So as you can see, Joe Kick, and every time every time you press delete, it was going to rerun all these simulations. And see here, Luka Doncic, 75% of the time he gets four times salary. So it's not quite as much as Joe Kick, but 12% of the time he's going to get seven times salary. So he could be a good tur good tournament play. Now, just to finish this off, we are going to put those columns over here so we can easily look at them. It's tougher to look at data when it goes from left to right, but when you have it in columns, it's easier. So let me copy this, these columns over, and I'm going to do paste special and transpose. So it puts them across. And now all we're going to do is pull this data over from here. 
normally we do VLOOKUP. I'm going to do a, throw a new formula at you here. HLOOKUP. Uh, maybe you guys have seen seen it, but the lookup value is Joe Kick. I, I rarely use this, so... And then, what we're going to do is the uh, topmost column has to be the name. Okay, let's change this range again. Let's just manually do it. There, to HO. And let's just put dollar signs in front of Oh my god, okay. This is so we've got the range, and then we want which row index. So it's just like if you look up comma two, comma false. There, so the high is 100.7. So if we go back to our simulator, and actually the formula's just changed. C92.34 and C92.3. So we've got it there. So now all we need to do is now just copy this formula across. Everything else should be the same. And now we want the third row. And then the fourth row. Fifth row. Sixth row. And seventh row. Let's format these as percentage. And now we'll copy this down. Let's format these as a number with only one decimal. And there we have it. Now it's easier to look at, and then you can kind of scroll down and see who you want to play. Like, who are the ones with the um, lowest floor? Uh, 25, that seems like the the high, or the highest floor there. If you want high ceilings, we got the, these guys here that are over 100. Uh, how many, who has the most percentage for getting uh, seven times their value? Here's a bunch of guys in double digits. Now, there's one thing just I want to bring up, though, are the standard deviation for some lower-priced guys. Because if we look down here, we're going to get a lot of guys who have high percentage of chance of getting seven times value. If a player happens to have normally average, say, five points a game, but then all of a sudden, when they do get the chance to play with for an injury, maybe they're scoring 30 points a game. If you're looking at their standard deviation for all of those games in total, they're going to have a huge standard deviation because some of the games are 5, some games are 30. So it's going to say standard deviation is like 15 or 20, even though they're only averaging like 10 points a game. So you're going to get... So once these guys play, even if they're projected to score seven points in that game for an average for their projection, if they have a 20-point standard deviation, there's going to be a lot of games where, there's, where their simulation comes up as 25 or 30, so that's why they're going to get a lot of this 7x. So what you need to do before, I mean, this is still all part of getting your, your standard deviation set, is what I would do is look through the players who have the low lower averages, but have a, a wide range of standard deviation, and take out all those low those low scores, uh, and only keep the standard deviation in there for for the high scores of the rerun it. So I would go through these game logs and find the guys who have the, maybe the low average, but the high standard deviation, and just take take those out and only do the standard deviation on the higher games. So maybe in the ten games they played, they averaged twenty five points, but their standard deviation is only five. If you, if you don't calculate averaging in with all those fives that, and tens that they got, then you wouldn't have, you won't have any uh, issues with that. So, 
that is really it. This, um, I really like doing simulations. It's kind of a new tool that I've been kind of playing with. And, uh, it could be a great help for you, especially once you tweak all the standard deviation and get everything set and running. You can have, um, a pretty good tool here for you. So, um, I will post any links down below, any formulas down below in the description. And, uh, We'll see if I can get the standard deviation set where you guys can download it uh, and put the link down below too. So that's all I have. Please let me know if you got any questions. If you did like the simulation stuff, post a comment or send me an email, uh, excelbyjoe at gmail.com. Um, maybe I can make some more videos on it. And also check out my, my, my tools, my uh, optimizedlineup.com um, for, or optimizedlineups.com for all, all our spreadsheet tools for uh, building bulk lineups and spreadsheet school dfs.com to uh learn how to do tons of spreadsheet items to uh make your daily fantasy life a lot easier so that's all i got hope you enjoyed this video i hope uh, it wasn't too long and uh that's it great talk to you later thanks guys